Hi everyone, uh, I have a brand new song to play for you. Uh, it's a little guitar instrumental ditty, and typically when I'm when I'm touring on the road, if I have a new little song, I can I can try it on on unsuspecting audiences to see if it's going to work or not. And I I don't get that get to do that anymore, so I'm so I'm going to do it today. Uh, so I'll tell a little bit of a story, and I'll play you the song. My name is Steve Bell, and this is for the journey this week. So there's a bit of a winding story to this song. I'll try to keep it brief um, and get to the song really quick. Um, I've been working on some guitar tutorials online that I'm going to put up, some teaching on, on how to play some Steve Bell instrumentals for those that like to do that sort of thing. And uh, in this one particular lesson I was getting ready to teach um, one of my songs, I realized there was a particular guitar technique that I do that I probably should show people. And then I thought, well, I should develop a little exercise around that um, to show people and teach it to them. And then as I was working on this little exercise, it started to turn into a song. And I thought, no, I don't need a song. I just need a little four-bar exercise. But the song wanted to come. And, uh, and so I let it. And when it was done, it's not a profound song. It's just more just fun and delightful. It doesn't mean anything. It's not tied to anything going on in my life. There's, there's and for a guy like me, and when you're doing Christian uh, songwriting, uh, typically people are looking for meaning, spirituality, teaching, uh, reflecting on, on the, the wider community issues, all those kinds of things. And this doesn't do any of that. It's just a little delightful guitar ditty. And I didn't know really what to do with it. And I didn't give it a name. I thought I'll just call it exercise number one. Or if I wanted to be pretentious, I'd call it etude number one or, or something like that. But then I started thinking about my daughter-in-law, uh, Diana Pops, who's a beautiful um, uh, art jeweler. And she, she's, she, she works magic with metals and, and with, with, uh, with gems. And you tell her a story and she will create a beautiful, um, symbolically rich, a uh, piece of jewelry um, that tells your story, uh, something that would be a family heirloom for maybe hundreds of years. I mean, it's that quality of stuff, and it's all thick with meaning and heavy and freighted with meaning. And, and during COVID, she started um, taking a break from that and making little felt um, crafts. Uh, she made a little narwhal uh, for a Christmas ornamentation um, out of felt, and she made a little June bug, and all these little things that didn't mean anything. They were just fun, they were delightful. And every time I saw them, she'd post them on the family uh, chat. And it would just, my heart would get happy, just seeing these whimsical little creations that didn't have to mean anything. They just were there for the delight of them. And then I thought about a song by Bruce Coburn. And Bruce Coburn, who isn't exactly known for his delightful songwriting, <laughs> he often writes fairly ponderous stuff, but he has got, he's got an, a song on his um, uh, 2003 You've Never Seen Everything album called Don't Forget About Delight. And he speaks about delight in a ponderous way that only Bruce Coburn can. Listen to this. He says, amid the rumors and the expectations and all the stories dreamt and lived amid the clangor and the dislocation and the things to fear and to forgive, don't forget about delight. And then he said, spring birds peck among the pressed down grasses. Clouds like zeppelins cross the sky. Anger drips in pools and then it passes. And I say a prayer that I don't forget about delight. And it's uh, something in our, in our day, I think, with so much going on and so much divisiveness and so much anxiety, uh, so much climate concern and political concern and economic concern and social concerns, these are all really important things, but I think part of the way that we manage them and how we resource ourselves to confront them in a meaningful way, one of the ways we do that is by not forgetting about delight. So I played this little song for Diana, and I said, what do you think? And she really, really liked it. And I told her why I wrote it, and I told her how she had influenced it. And she was delighted by that. And then she said, oh, I, I have to create a little art piece for this. And so she created a little, it's called a, a kinetic sculpture of a, a, of, a, of a, I think we'll have it here for you can see. It's, it's a little shoot of greenery coming out of a, a garden bed. And it doesn't mean anything. It's just fun, and it's cute, and it's delightful. And, um, and I'm just appreciative to her for, for highlighting to me the importance of this kind of work in this season. So here's the song um, for your journey this week, and it's called This Too Is True. OK, 
Okay. I have this little technique, which is not unique to me at all. My most folk guitar players uh, do this. This is called an alternating thumb. And what I do is I add a, a little extra finger in there to, to give it a, a bit of bubble and extra percolating percussion. So it goes like this. Mm -hmm. 